How you doing everybody? Nick DiVirgilio here and today's video is how to multi-track record via USB with the Roland TD50. One of the coolest features by far about the new TD50 is the fact that you can multi-track record via the USB up to 10 tracks all the way up to 96K. So you can have your high def recordings and get high def drums with USB right out of the side of the box here. But there are a few things that they don't really tell you in the owner's manual and you can't find online. So after a little bit of trial and error, I found out a couple of these little tweaks. They're not hard. And once you get those down, it's totally easy. Now I'm gonna be recording to Pro Tools, but I also checked out these things in Ableton Live. And since it worked on two DAWs in my office, I'm assuming it'll be the same with any DAW you have in your studio. So let's get into the details. The first thing you need to do is take the TD50 out of the box and make sure you install all of the software and the drivers that come with the TD50. Make sure you check for updates and all of that kind of stuff. You won't be able to USB multi-track without those drivers. All right, the first thing I wanna show you, and they do tell you this in the manual, is you need to go to the setup button, which is right here on the top of the machine, hit setup. And then I have it highlighted already, but the second one in under F2 USB audio. Press F2 and it'll show up there. Now at the bottom of the screen, you'll see driver mode. And right now it's highlighted to vendor. That's what you want to have in order to USB multi-track. The other mode is generic. When it's on generic, you can only use the TD50 to USB MIDI record. That's if you want to use this as a controller, play the pads and maybe uh, play another plugins drum sounds while playing on these pads. A great feature as well, but in order to multi-track record, you need to have that driver mode set to vendor. The next thing is to set the outputs. One thing to mention, on the back of the TD50, you have eight direct outputs. Now, the USB multi-track outputs mirror those direct outputs. So when you set the levels and all that kind of thing, it's gonna be the exact same. They mirror each other. That being said, to set up the outputs, again, go to the setup button, press it once. Now, under output, which is F1, press that, and here's where we're gonna get started. Under F1 is master, but we're gonna start with F2, which is direct. This is where you set the direct signals to your DAW. It's really simple to do. You see all of them here listed, one through eight, and then the master left and right is gonna be your nine and 10. Now here's the first thing that got a little bit confusing to me, and I had to find out with a little bit of trial and error. I was thinking that since direct out, number one, on the back of the box is the same as direct out via USB. I assumed that it would be channel one in the DAW, but it's not. Actually, the master left and right are your one and two, and the first direct out would be channel three in your DAW. So that's the little bit of the confusing part. So direct out number one is actually channel number three in Pro Tools. Number two is channel four, and so on up the line. This is once you got that down, the rest is easy. So I've set up Pro Tools, as you can see over here on my screen. I have it listed at the bottom too. My kick is channel number three, snare is channel four, tom one, five, tom two, six, tom three, seven. Now I have, I split the hat, the hi-hat and the ride symbol to get a little bit of separation of the two. Then I have the crash symbols coming down stereo of number seven and eight. That makes sense. When I first did this, I put all of the symbols down just two channels, but then I wanted to separate them out and get a little bit of con more control. And I need to show you how to set up the hi-hat and the ride. So there's a little bit of, of tweaks you have to do, but again, not very hard. So let's go back to the beginning, setting your outputs for your signals. Again, kick drum is on channel number three. And as you see right here, kick is highlighted. Whenever you hit a pad, it'll go to, you'll see it highlight on the screen. So kick drum is highlighted right now. And I have it coming out of number one. If I take this off of number one and put it on say four or whatever, you'll see it's showing up on a different input on Pro Tools. So it's really that simple. Just get it to where you want it to go and it will go. Now it's back on input number three, output number one of the TD50. See, get that? Once you have it in your brain, you'll never forget. All right, let me show you how to get the levels correct into your DAW. Now I'm sure every DAW is a little bit different as far as how they receive their levels, but I'm sure it's probably generally the same as well, if that makes sense. But for Pro Tools, here's how it works. I'm gonna go over to the mixer page so you can see the uh, different mix inputs. 
Now your faders on the front of your TD50 are how you set the levels. So we'll do the kick drum. Now it looks like it's really low here on the fader settings, right? But that's because it's digital. You don't need to crank it up so high that you're gonna be uh, distorting your input, right? A little goes a long way when you're doing digital. So here we go. If I turn this all the way up, you'll see that I peaked the input channel, made it a little, I gave it a little red dot on the top. So you gotta bring that down and just to get it to where it's manageable. And you can always turn it up digitally when you're making the mix, right? You can always give it more level there. So you don't wanna go too high and distort your channel. And that's how you do it with all of the different drums. Snare drum. It's at a good spot right now, but if I crank it all the way up, you'll see it uh, peaked on the channel fader over here. So you gotta bring it back down. And that's it, that's how you set the levels for all of the drums, cymbals included. All right, let me show you how I split the ride cymbal and the hi-hat to give them their own channels. Again, the master left and right are channels one and two, but usually if you just set them down, master left and right, they'll both come up the center. You can't get them totally split left and right to give them separation. So what you have to do is this. Follow me here, it's not that hard, but it's definitely worth mentioning. To do this, you need to go to the master button above F1. Again, this is on the output. I'll start from the beginning just to show you one more time. Set up, okay? Output, F1. Right now it's on direct F2, so we'll get back to master. As you can see here on the screen, the only two sounds going from, to the master left and right are the hat and the ride cymbal. Nothing else is going to the master left and right. If they were, they would all be going to channels one and two. Make sense? Okay, so I made it so just those two are the only ones going. Now, if you wanna separate those out to where they're getting their own recording channel, this is the tricky part. But once you, again, once you get it, it's not that tricky. So you go out of here, exit out. You wanna to go to the main mixer of the whole drum kit. In the main mixer of the whole drum kit, you can set the pan for any of the pads, any of the instruments. So what I did was, for the hi-hat, I panned it all the way to the left, as far as it will go. And for the ride cymbal, I panned it all the way to the right, as far as it can go. So now, over in Pro Tools, the hi-hat is on input number one, and the ride cymbal is on input number two. Last thing to be said about this, when you're playing and you have your headphones on, the ride cymbal and the hi-hat are gonna be panned really hard right and hard left. That's the only slightly uh, hard part to play with. You get, you get used to it pretty quickly, but usually when you're playing a drum kit, you know, even though the stuff is panned, it's still kind of out here in the stereo field. It's not way over to the right. But to, in order to have these panned and to get their own channels, this is what you have to do. And it's, once you start playing and get everything going, it's really not that bad at all. So just wanted to mention that. And that's how you get your own separate channel. So let's go back again. Exit out of here, kit, right? Setup, output, back to direct. So that's how I have everything else. So now if you look at the crash symbols, they're on seven and eight, it just says left and right. I have them panned a little bit in the mixer. I don't need to give them their separate channels and I'm good to go that way. Although I could, I could do the same thing with the two crash symbols as I did with the, the hat and the ride if I wanted to. And really that's the whole thing in order to get your signal into Pro Tools and to multi-track record, except for this. One final caveat. In order to multi-track record with the TD50 via USB, you have to have the USB as your recording interface, okay? Everything has to be running through here. So I am monitoring Pro Tools and the output of Pro Tools and everything through the, the headphones on the TD50, okay? Hope that makes sense. You can't multi-track record via USB into say, like I have my Apollo 8P over here, a regular recording interface. That is not in the chain at all right now. If you want to multi-track record with the TD50 via analog and use the analog direct outs, of course then you use a regular recording interface. But this whole digital realm and the USB realm, this is your recording for interface you monitor through the TD50. I hope this is not too confusing for you. It's really just those few little setups and if you kind of take them in order and make sure they're all together, then you're really good to go. Enough talking for me, let's get to making some music and recording some drums. Everything's set up on both ends. I have a little piece of music that I've written to play along to. Let me show you what I've been talking about. Here we go. One.
two, three. All right, now let me play back those audio tracks and solo each one so you can hear that each part got recorded on its own track. So like you're not hearing cymbals on the kick drum track and so on. So I'll do that for you right now. There you have it everybody, multi-track recording via USB with the Roland TD50. A couple of settings you have to get in there and tweak, but once you have those done, it's very easy to do and I hope this video helped you out finding those little settings to tweak so you can make beautiful music with some great pieces of gear. If you have any more questions about this Roland product or any other Roland product, just contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. Thanks a lot for watching.